Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare this Krishna. is honest. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's so, so, so nice to see you. <laughs> so, so nice to hear you. So nice to hear you. See, Maharaj, it's, I, I, just seeing the devotees coming through and seeing you, it's like goosebumps all over me. Thank you so much for giving us your darshan, for giving us your mercy. We are so fortunate, Marsh, to have you the Bautam class this morning. It's like ecstasy for me. It is, it's ecstasy. <laughs> you are always spiritually enlivened. His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Ki Jai. You know him, Maharaj. He makes us become, you know, like that. <laughs> Some of and us we, take it, and some of us take all of it. You took all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. Please bless me that I can continue to do that in service of Sri Prabhupada. And we welcome all the devotees um, for being part of the morning Bhagavatam class. We are very, very fortunate, very, very blessed to actually have His Holiness Chandramali Swami to give class. And the good news is he will be giving class on here regularly. So it's not a one-time thing. So um, let's be uh, greedy in a nice way for Maharaj's uh, mercy and darshan and his wonderful words. Maharaj, it's all yours. <laughs> okay. Should I begin? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Om again, Timirandasya. Gananjana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurveda Maha Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutali Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Um Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pastyatya Devisatarane Vanchakopa Turubhischa Gripa Sindhu Vehebhaja Patita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Jitra Karsu Gaur Bhavana Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I offer my obeisances and respects to all the Vaishnavas. And we will uh, commence with a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter two, um, creation, it's called. And this is verse number 24, which is quite a interesting verse because it's practically all analogy partivad daruno bumas tasmaragni trai mayaha tamasatu rajas tasmat satvaryam brahma darshanam okay translation we can bring it up yeah. firewood <clears throat> is a transformation of earth but smoke is better than raw wood. And fire is still better for fire. Fire, we can benefit, derive the benefits of superior knowledge through Vedic sacrifices. Similarly, passion, rajas, is better than ignorance, tamas. But goodness, sattva, is better, best because by goodness, one can realize the supreme truth. So we need to go down the page. <clears throat> so if we have a good reader out there, anybody who can read clearly and slowly, uh, please come on and read nicely. I can help you, Maharaj. Thank you. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. As explained above, one can get release from the conditioned life of material existence by devotional service to the personality of Godhead. It is further comprehended herein that one has to rise to the platform of the mode of goodness, sattva, so that one can be eligible for the devotional service of the Lord. But 
if there are impediments on the progressive path, anyone, even from the platform of Tamas, can gradually rise to the sattva platform by the expert direction of the spiritual master. Sincere candidates must, therefore, approach an expert spiritual master for such a progressive march, and the bona fide expert spiritual master is competent to direct a disciple from any stage of life, tamas, rajas, or sattva. It is a mistake, therefore, to consider that worship of any quality or any form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is equally beneficial. Except Vishnu, all separated forms are manifested under the conditions of material energy, and therefore, the forms of material energy cannot help anyone to rise to the platform of sattva, which alone can liberate a person from material bondage. The uncivilized state of life or the life of the lower animals is controlled by the mode of tamas, the civilized life of man with the passion for various types of material benefits is the stage of rajas. The rajas stage of life gives a slight clue to the, to the realization of the absolute truth in the forms of fine sentiments and philosophy, art, and culture with moral and ethical principles, but the mode of sattva is still higher stage of material quality, which actually helps one in realizing the absolute truth. In other words, there is a qualitative difference between the different kinds of worshiping methods, as well as the respective results derived from the predominating deities, namely Brahma, Vishnu, and Hara. Okay. So this verse in purport is giving us different levels of consciousness and the importance of elevating the consciousness to the stage where one can practice bhakti effectively. Using the example of firewood, smoke, and fire as transformed because within fire, within wood, there is fire, and within fire, there is always smoke. So wood is the is considered the manifestation of the qualities of undevelopedness. In other words, if you want fire, you're going to, you're going to have to do something to the wood to bring out the fire. Fire exists within wood automatically. So within the three modes of material nature, tamas, which is compared to the wood, rajas, which is compared to the smoke, and sattva, which is compared to the fire, there are different qualities that are exhibited by each of these categories. The quality of wood is that it is very much covered Therefore, fire cannot even be understood to exist within wood. It is there, but there is no perception of that quality simply by the wood itself. When smoke appears, it's an indication that there is fire in some capacity. Although smoke cannot serve as fire, it simply is an indication that something has elevated beyond the stage of complete coverage. In other words, the fire is being revealed through first through the insignificant, through the sign of smoke itself. Now fire is what you actually need to cook your food and to uh, take care of your uh, requirements that are needed in the sense that we compare these three categories to the three modes of material nature. So in the mode of tamas or ignorance, there is no awareness of the Supreme or even any knowledge of the Supreme. So on that stage, no one can understand anything about the Supreme. It is the lowest mode. It represents ignorance. It represents uh, wrong activities. Um, people who are affected by or exist 
within the quality of ignorance are destructive to themselves and to others. It's a lower quality. Some of the characteristics of ignorance are intoxication, uh, excess sleep, uh, madness, uh, you know, incoherent speech. <laughs> These are all qualities of the mode of ignorance. And so there's no indication or even any uh, slight a bit of knowledge that about the goal of life from that particular point. Uh, Prabhupada then goes into the mode of passion and he gives some certain characteristics of the mode of passion, such as creativity, art, culture, like that, moral and ethical principles. But passion still is motivated by selfishness. And therefore, whatever one does, which is about material gain for oneself or for one's extended self, which are the family and society, it is still uh, undeveloped towards the spiritual realm. In other words, even from the mode of passion, one cannot practice spiritual life. One has to rise themselves to the qualities of goodness, which is sattva. And sattva is characterized by uh, charity, uh, tolerance, uh, proper no knowledge of scripture, religious activities, a type of happiness that comes through moral and ethical principles and religious practice. And it is illuminating, just as fire uh, reveals um, whatever is in its area. In other words, if there's darkness, you bring in fire, you can see within the darkness. The mode of goodness is revealing. But still, mode of goodness falls short of the actual goal. But it's a stepping stone. It's a, it's a level of practice where one can go to, to the higher stages. Therefore, it's practically impossible, although there have been cases where one can go from the mode of passion to transcendence, but it's very, very rare, and that's, that's under very controlled circumstances. But the mode of goodness, as Krishna told Arjuna himself, be situated in goodness. And then in that way, one can understand <clears throat> what is one's duty because in the mode of goodness duty becomes the foremost principle of activity what is my duty what is my duty to myself in terms of how to elevate myself and what is my duty to the supreme personality of godhead so that principle of duty arjuna was in the mode of passion and ignorance when he spoke to krishna at the beginning and therefore he had many reasons why he felt doing his duty would be contrary to the benefit of everyone, including himself. But Krishna showed that actually your duty is something you cannot give up. And therefore, because I am giving you the direction on how to use your duty, which is just a reminder of what you were supposed to do in the first place, then Arjuna was able to be able to see that yes, his duty was the cause of his success, of performing his duty. So our duty is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is our, what is called our innate characteristic. Uh, Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Sadhu Kavamai, Sravanadi, Siddhi Chitte, Pradye Joy. In the hearts of all living entities, your love for Krishna exists, but as we see, as smoke covers <clears throat> fire, as wood covers smoke, um, the soul is covered by different layers of the material energy. And therefore, one has to practice devotional service to, re to awaken those qualities that bring one to the category of transcendence. And what are some of the characteristics of transcendence? They're very similar to the characteristics of the mode of goodness, but there are some distinct qualities. The mode of goodness 
It has all good qualities. And uh, in those good qualities, one's character develops according to those qualities. And character is the basis for, the, for developing the proper mood of worship. Because without having that proper mood of worship, even if one has good qualities, one will not be able to worship properly. In other words, one may also be in the mode of goodness and use the one's material benefits and benedictions and good qualities in order to further material existence. In other words, to find happiness through various types of material activities, which are what we say morally and religiously acceptable. But that still will get one another birth in the material world because until, until, until one actually develops the activities of devotional service. And what are those activities? One has to serve the Lord with a desire to please the Lord. Ayabila Sita Sunya, Jnana Karmana Vritam Anukulena Krishna Silanam, Bhakti Uttama. Srila Rupa Goswami gives us the formula that devotional service it actually becomes pure when one is no longer looking for the benedictions of the results of activities. So we sometimes we see that, well, maybe we even see it quite often within the society of devotees, and one becomes very attached to the activities they perform, seeing, looking for a particular result. One may look for a particular result, but if one becomes attached to the particular result, according to how that result manifests, whether it's pleasing, unpleasing, or a combination of both of these elements, then one cannot understand the nature of the Supreme, because the Supreme Personality of Godhead has nothing to do with the results of our activities. He is transcendental to everything. So the results of our activities are simply an opportunity to offer the activities we perform for his pleasure. And therefore, as Prabhupada said, under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, he uses the word competent spiritual master, one can learn how to transcend these three modes of material nature. Yeah and then come to what is called the platform of Sudasattva. Sudasattva means goodness that is uncontaminated even by the elements of the material energy. That is called pure goodness or transcendental goodness or that, that activity which is focused on uh, pleasing the Supreme Personality of God. And the word focus, when we use that word focus, that has to be part of the activity. In other words, if one pleases the Supreme Personality of Godhead without trying to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that is not fully beneficial. One has to be, have the intention to please the Lord and at the same time, the result must be that one pleases the Lord. In other words, one can accidentally, or what we say, by situation, please the Lord, and still not get bhakti. What is that? And what is the example of that? The example is the demons. The demons have a tendency to be in opposition with the Lord. And, it came, and, and we, saw, we hear how when Krishna was personally present, so many demons came to attack Vrindavan, and so many were sent by Kamsa to personally kill Krishna. But Krishna enjoyed killing the demons because Krishna has this tendency that he likes to fight. Prabhupada says, where do you get that tendency for fighting? It's within the Supreme also. Of course, our, our tendency for fighting is not directed in an intelligent way many times, and therefore we find ourselves winding up in the lower modes because of that. But Krishna's tendency for fighting is part of his nature, which he uses in order to benedict others. So he enjoys the fighting, but at the same time, uh, 
the persons who, the demons who are killed, they get liberation. So they get what they deserve in terms of what benedictions they can be, they can get from being in the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But again, using that as an example, there was no intention to please Krishna, but still it happened. But Rupa Goswami qualifies the principle by saying that one must serve the Lord with a desire to please the Lord. And of course, that, that comes down to our day-to-day -day activities. We might not always be conscious of uh, the Lord in every activity we perform, but uh, if we're performing the activity in the best possible way, with the mood to please, then that is, that is called pure devotional service. Or that is that devotional service that is uh, accepted by the Lord. When he ex the Lord accepts our devotional service, he benedicts the um, practitioner with two characteristics or two qualities immediately. The third quality will come at the th later, but the two characteristics that he gives is one, we lose our attraction gradually for material activities and material relationships. Sometimes I find um, people approach me who are new in Krishna consciousness and um, they, they are now engaged in some regular service. And then they come to me and say, Maharaj, you know, I'm engaging in devotional service and I'm really finding it very satisfying. I'm becoming happy. But now I have my own, my material responsibilities yet. And I don't really feel so enthusiastic about them anymore. I'm saying, I say, well, very good. You're making advancement. You're making advancement. Because this is the indication that one is making advancement. One loses enthusiasm to try to perform activities to get something from the material energy. And of course, the other quality is one develops knowledge. That knowledge which situates one in one's position or the knowledge of that I am not this body, that I'm a spirit soul, that I have an eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord through serving the Lord with devotion. And that, that's the foundation of the knowledge. And of course, within that foundation, there are many other categories of knowledge. So Krishna reveals these different principles of knowledge as one becomes more, one pleases him in devotional service. Now, the final characteristic, which comes after a period of time, one starts to feel the presence of Krishna in one's day-to-day -day activities. Just like if you are sitting in a room and uh, in one area of the room, there's a fireplace and then the fireplace is, is on and the fire is there. So depending on what position you are in the room, you'll feel the, the, that amount of heat. So if you're on the other side of the room, you'll get maybe, maybe you'll feel something. But as you get closer to the fire, then the heat becomes more and more obvious. And also one starts to see the fire more and more. So as one performs devotional service that is pleasing, then Krishna reveals himself to the devotee by then one starts to actually feel the presence of Krishna in their life. And Krishna is right there within our heart. He's Paramatma. He's the super soul. He doesn't leave. He witnesses all our activities. And he's also guiding us day by day through various ways, either directly by giving us knowledge within the heart or indirectly through the external energy by teaching us through that energy. And but as it says that, yeah, so 
And Krishna speaks this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th chapter, where he says that, uh, that devotional service is like a light. When we bring that light in the darkness, the darkness is gone. So Krishna gives light and illumination to the heart and mind of the devotee as the devotee makes progress in devotional service. And the, the, the idea is to try to please Krishna. Pleasing Krishna is not just simply trying to please Krishna, but by following carefully the instructions of the spiritual master and executing those instructions as the foundation for everything we do. In other words, making the instructions foremost in our activities. And then we find that in, in any interaction we may have with others or in general, with people in general, becomes an opportunity to experience the presence of Krishna when we are carefully following the instructions. And of course, we mentioned earlier that mood, the mood of the instructions is to carry out the instructions in order to please the spiritual master, to please the Lord, like that. So um, as long as we are in the lower modes of ignorance and passion, there's very little understanding of the Supreme or very little detachment from this material life. So uh, one has to raise themselves up, up to the platform of goodness. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 18th chapter, Krishna describes what are those qualities which are in the mode of goodness and one has to cultivate. Sometimes devotees say that oh, you all you have to do is execute devotional service and all these qualities will automatically manifest. That is not incorrect. And there's other class of devotees that say that yes, we have to execute devotional service, but at the same time, we have to cultivate these qualities in, in an individual way. In other words, one has to practice each and every one of these qualities in order to uh, develop them. So the first principle is, yes, if one is fully absorbed in devotional service, one automatically these qualities will develop. But unless one, one is not fully absorbed, then one should cultivate these qualities as part of one's execution of one's activities in devotional service. And that makes it easier and more, more quicker to develop these qualities. And we have to practice. And when we're put into a situation where these, uh, one, or, one or more of these qualities are needed, such as sometimes people will say something to you or say something about you that may not be true or may be a half truth. Um, how would you deal with that? Would you immediately try to defend yourself? Would you immediately become angry at the person? Would you, uh, or would you reflect and think, okay, Krishna, this is what's happening. Why am I being put in this situation? Therefore, let me try to understand it by your mercy. So there's different ways to react. And depending on how, to, how we react in certain situations, we can develop these qualities, such as tolerance, humility, patience, pridelessness, um, and equanimity. Equanimity is something that devotees have to really work on. That means not being disturbed by happiness and distress, or not becoming overly excited in gain and becoming unhappy in loss. Loss and gain are part of the material energy. Things come, things go. People come, people go. Situations come, situations go. Uh, our body comes and gradually it is going. <laughs> so loss and gain is, is the dualities which make up the material energy. So you'll find that in devotional service that one doesn't depend on uh, loss and gain, but one simply focuses on Krishna. In other words, 
by focusing on Krishna, that is the supreme gain. And by not focusing on Krishna, then whatever losses we may ap uh, appear to have in our life become something that causes us unhappiness or some disturbance in life. Okay. So one should study this verse because it's quite deep and there's many commentaries by the Acharyas on this because it is, it's an analogy, but in that analogy, it gives really clear understanding of the different levels of consciousness because devotional service means consciousness. Activities are a way to elevate a consciousness, but consciousness is the goal. And the, of course, the, the highest principle or the goal is to become fully Krishna conscious. Um, Satatam kirtayanto mam yatantas tasta dadvritaha yatantas tastimam bhaktya nitya yukta upasite. Always chanting my glories, bowing down before me, these great souls of worship me in devotion. So, um, to constantly be in touch with Krishna through the activities of devotional service and the consciousness of awareness of the presence of Krishna. And of course, to make it very simple, the more we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the more we can connect with Krishna and remember Krishna, like that. And that's the easiest, most recommended and most direct way to remember Krishna is through his holy name. Okay, so we'll uh, conclude here and we'll open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I was trying to make my notes as you were speaking. I think I have to play your lectures. Every point you said, I couldn't keep up with the writing, but it was wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We open up for questions and we ask devotees, if you have questions, please uh, do raise the um, blue hand so I can catch you and I don't want to not catch you. But we do have one in the chat here uh, by Bhakta Roberto. Please accept my humble obeisance. So all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, dear Maharaj. Question. So what is happening to devotees that are chanting, doing service and devotional practice in Thomas and Rajas? They don't get spiritual realizations so much, but I suppose they get purified and raised to sattva more. How can we speed that up when we see that some devotees can be in that lower gunas for even 10 years? Well, as long as one is performing devotional service or the activities of devotional service, even if it's mixed devotional service, it's not in the lower modes. It's just that they haven't realized that yet because of their own association with the lower modes. So eventually they have to purify those characteristics that are keeping them in the lower modes. And that means there should be some, some guidance coming from uh, superior supervision to guide them along, to help them see what they need to uh, uh, what we say, get rid of and what they need to take on. Uh, I'm remembering the prayer by Bhakti Tirta Swami, which was a very powerful and a very, what we say, landmark type of prayer. I, in fact, I have the prayer right on my desk here. I look at it all the time. And this is a very powerful prayer. If one sincerely makes this prayer, things will happen. It says, Dear Lord, whatever we need to be better servants for Srila Prabhupada's mission, let it happen or come to us. Whatever we need to have taken away to become pure in Srila Prabhupada's service, let it be taken away. So obviously those who are in the lower modes need things taken away. <laughs> and so therefore, they may not always see their own contaminations, it becomes obvious to others. And to be in the lower mode of um, ignorance and passion becomes hard to really associate with devotees. 
because those qualities have a tendency to cause disturbances. So therefore one has to work on those and uh, get guidance whenever needed. Thank you, Maharaj. Dear Krishna Prabhu, you have a question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, wonderful class, Maharaj, as, as always. Thank you so much. Uh, one question I have is, Maharaj, you uh, said about a devotional service that we should not have any expectation to make it to make it transform a pure devotional service. Anya Abhilashita Shudnyam. So my question is, how should one measure his progress in his spiritual life? Uh, although you gave us three beautiful points, like the symptoms that you told us, that one will start losing the attraction of material life, and we will also develop some transcendental knowledge, and eventually Krishna will reveal ourselves himself to us more. But that, again, in the initial stage, how should one measure himself or herself? Well, measurement can come by observing two things. One is how much I'm actually becoming attached to Krishna and eager to serve. And simultaneously, how much I'm losing my attraction for material life. And how much I'm also losing my attraction for association with materialistic people. That's one way. And the other way is something we, we've been mentioning throughout the whole class is that one should see how one, whether one is developing the qualities of goodness. So as those qualities start to manifest, this is an indication that one is making progress. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, these two Hare things. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, that's a question by, from Radha Bhakti Devi Dasi. She said, Hare Krishna and pranams Maharaj. <clears throat> I really appreciated your point about being equipoised amidst the duality of the material world. Can you speak a little about when anger is when anger is appropriate? Is it ever okay as neophyte devotees to seek justice? Well, anger, hmm, Krish Prabhupada explains it Krodha Bhakta, uh, Krodha Bhakta decision, he calls it, he mixes the, the words in there. Krodha Bhakta decision, the anger of a devotee, but that's transcendental. Mm. When one anger is simply the younger brother of desire, that's the material understanding. When desire gets frustrated or not fulfilled, uh, anger appears like that. So as long as we are attached to fulfilling our material desires and they somehow become unfulfilled or, uh, or even the results of the activity gets lost in time, anger will still be there. We have to check anger with the principle of forgiveness when it comes in relationship to other people. There is the antidote for anger, forgiveness. One also has to forgive themselves. Sometimes we find people become angry at themselves for not being up to the standard that they expect. And then they become unhappy with themselves or angry at themselves. Now, this is another form of uh, Maya because ultimately everything depends on the mercy of the Lord. So the more we take shelter of the mercy of the Lord, the more we depend on the mercy of the Lord, the more we connect with Krishna and devotional service, and we can override these apparent inebriates that may appear to be part of our character. Marj, there's a part two to Dr. Roberto's question. He, he's asking, so is it still mixed devotional service, but if they want to advance, they need to invest to rise themselves to the higher mode. I guess Krishna rises up to some point, then still there are things we need to do that Krishna expects from us. How, 
how to understand that please clear my knowledge yeah it, it, devotional service is cultivation of the activities and the qualities that are in relationship to krishna it's action devotional service is action it's not simply sitting in the corner and meditating on serving or um, you have to you have to work you have to be active yeah that's obvious i can't believe roberto asked that question it's such an obvious question why is it so hard to understand that if if you want to achieve something you have to you have to endeavor to achieve it but ultimately what makes the difference in material and spiritual consciousness is the results are given by krishna or a devotee where the results are given by the material energy for the non-devotee. Marge, there's another question by um, uh, Vishaka, that's our second daughter. She said, Hare Krishna Marge, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Marge, you mentioned earlier that pure devotional service is that which is done without any expectation or desire for some outcome or result, but simply done to please Krishna. What then is service that is motivated by the desire to know Krishna and love him? Is that still pure devotional service or would yeah. that be considered a more selfishly motivated activity? No, that's, that's, that's the, the goal of devotional service is to know Krishna. Yeah. The more you know Krishna, the more you love Krishna. Knowledge of Krishna brings love of Krishna automatically because Krishna is all lovable and he has all amazing and attractive qualities. All the qualities and all the characteristics that we're looking for in this world in our relationships with other persons are personified in complete perfection in Krishna. So yeah, we should be motivated to to learn more about Krishna, and that will that will that will extend or increase your love for Krishna automatically. Therefore, we have to hear in Satam Prasangam Memavirya Samvido Pravanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata. Yeah, to hear and chant the glories of the, of the Lord in the association of devotees brings happiness, nectar, and awareness of the personality of God. Marj, there's another question by Anuradha, and she said, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandar Pranam Jai Shri Prabhupada. My question is, as a grihasta, how can we improve our devotional service by staying at home at this COVID time? <laughs> well, there's hundreds of things you can do. <laughs> There's things you can stop doing and there's things you can. Uh, let me see, find one thing that may be something that you can, that will be the foundation for everything. And that's that we can start to reflect on where we've been and where we are now and see what we need to advance in life. So in other words, there should be, this is a good time to uh, recollect our emotions, thoughts, ideas, plans, and everything, and sort of reformulate everything and try to bring greater amounts of perfection or what we say quality in everything we do. But our, by having this slower form of life, we're actually giving a chance to now to more contemplation and that more contemplation will allow us to have more time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and develop relationships with others who are what we say in the family and strengthen those relationships. Marge, uh, Sri Devi has a question. You, you can go ahead, Sri Devi. 
Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to His Holiness Bhakti Tita Maharaj, and all glories to you. Uh, this, this, this lecture was power packed. Every single line was so significant, like Ansuya says. Thank you so much. My question is again about results. Somehow I'm just not able to wrap my brain around not uh, expecting results or not wanting results because in all our activities, we're trying to help people come closer to Krishna. We want them to, you know, stop their suffering. So how is it possible to continue our activities without being attached to the result? I, I just have a hard time with that one. Yeah, it's easy. You have to, you have to act like you're attached, but you have to at the same time not be attached. Very easy. <laughs> you have, in other words, if you want something done, you have to work at it. You have to apply the knowledge. You have to apply the skills that come with that activity. You may also need to get advice from others. But after everything is applied and the activity is performed, the results, you can't make the results happen. That's all. So that's what it means not be attached to the results because attachment means that when things don't go you feel unhappy and when you things do go you feel happy but the devotee knows you know um, i'm going to try my best to preach krishna consciousness and i want everybody who hears me to take up krishna consciousness and make advancement so we want that but at the same time we can't make it happen simply by our, you know, by our activities. It will happen in due course of time or it may not happen in due course of time. Krishna says, Karmana Evadivadis K Ma Falechu Kadachana Marka Ma Karma Kalahetu Bor Ma Te Sangosa Karmani. You have a right to perform your prescribed duties but you're not entitled to the results of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be not attached to doing your duty. You have to work like it depends on you. But you have to know it doesn't. That's detachment. Marge, uh, Pritchard has a question. He comes next. Go ahead. I think Sri Devi has a hard time with these answers that I give because I guess I'm too much in the mode of passion, Guru Maharaj. Please save me. Uh, okay. I'll, uh, I can recommend that you practice, you know, chanting more and more because by chanting, you that will help you develop your detachment from everything. Okay, thank you very much. That's helpful. Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Brixit Das. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to to you, to Sri Um I saw you before. Now I can't find you. Where are you? <laughs> I changed. I went from laptop to computer. So maybe. Are computer. you on Vishaka's? Uh... Thing or no, no, I, I can see myself okay, but like two steps away from where Anasia's picture is. I oh, there you myself. are. Okay, I, I got yeah. you. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, except how many basins is our glory to the power part. Thank you. I always like that smile, so I wanted to see. <laughs> so, in the lecture you give, and I, I have to second the person that said it's power packed, I'm going to listen to over and over and over again. Thank you very much. For coming and this is our first day boy we were so fortunate you know, what's what's to come in the future um make it so simple my question is when you were speaking you said when you were comparing the modes you said sometimes a person can go from passion to transcendence but that's very rare you mentioned that um so then i started thinking what example would cause a person to go from passion to transcendence and then I remember a few things that from, from Srila Prabhupada, actually, the Advaita Swami made that statement. 
And then Bhaktivedanta Swami also made a certain statement, kind of similar to that. So I wanted clarity on it. And here's the statement. When you're doing service, Bhaktivedanta Maharaj says, or my Guru Maharaj says, we should be passionate. We should be passionate. With it. But this is devotional service that we're performing. And he's mentioned that we should be passionate and go after. So is that an example of going from passion in terms of what the person is doing or how the person is feeling, but they're actually performing devotional service? Would that be no. one of the examples? No, that's not because okay, that's passion, right. passionate, passionate doesn't mean in, mo in the mode of passion. Okay, <laughs> I know what you mean. In the mode of passion means there's certain characteristics and qualities that one exhibits. That's lower, right? That's lower. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I get that. Okay. okay, all right. So then we can be passionate about performing goods and service and that's still transcendence then. That sh that should be there. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. This one. Thank you, Marge. I think uh, there is one more question. Yes, there is. Uh, from Vrunda. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Very nice class as always, Maharaj. You mentioned in one of your answers that we need to do activities and endeavor for the results from Krishna, but sometimes we plan and make lots of endeavors for the service of the Lord, but eventually something happens and our plan and endeavors don't work and we don't get to do that service. So how should, how should we take it up, Maharaj? Is it okay to understand that Krishna doesn't have his mercy on me this time, so this happened, but actually Krishna always has his mercy on us. So how do we deal with it? Maybe that's maybe Krishna didn't want you to serve in that way. You could take it like that. Or maybe because you didn't plan it properly, it didn't happen. You can look at it from the two different sides. But if you're sincerely trying and you see that things are not manifesting, you could see that obviously the Lord is directing you in a, in a different way. Thank you so much, Marge. Are there any other? This one just popped up, Marge. I'm, I'm sorry. Hare Krishna, Marge. Dandvat Pranam. I want to be clear about what mode do the rishis carry when they get angry? Like we have heard about Rishi Durvasa when we have learned that anger does, uh, takes us uh, back to meet Krishna. Well, he's a yogi. <laughs> He's a powerful mystic yogi. He's, uh, although he performs a lot of activities with devotees, um, he's a plenary expansion of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva, one of Lord Shiva's qualities is that um, he uses anger in the service of the Lord. So Darvasa is like, you know, he's like a touch, touchstone for anger. He can explode at any time. And that's his nature. But still, he's a very powerful, powerful Rishi. So you see, we find that there are people who have amazing qualities, amazing spiritual qualities and amazing spiritual uh, activities. But still, there's something material still in their character. When Lakshmi was born from the ocean of milk, of course, she's never born from the ocean of milk, but during that churning of the milk ocean, a Lakshmi appeared. She sits on the chest of Narayan, therefore Narayan is her, her, her only consort. But then again, it was uh, announced that Lakshmi should choose her suitor, her husband. And as she was going through all the devas and the demons, she saw many good qualities and she also saw something else. In other words, no one was perfect. She saw, well, this person is very learned, but still they have a tendency to become angry. Uh, this person is very charitable, but still their knowledge is not developed. So there is, so we find 
that even in great souls, there may still be a tinge of something that looks material and may also manifest itself in that way. Just like we see Durvasa, you know, he tried to frustrate um, uh, Ambarish Maharaj. And then of course, Krishna saved him. And Durvasa had to do a lot of penances and a lot of prayers to get saved from the chakra of Vishnu. Uh, and, then, and then of course, with Draupadi, when he came to visit the Pandavas, after they had finished eating, he was sent by by Kamsa to just to uh, have Durvasa become angry at the Pandavas because they couldn't supply food. So he was told to arrive right after they finished. But Krishna saved the situation in that case. But you find that, yeah, even when we say even persons that are some of very spiritual elevated, still may have some tinge of some material quality there that happens and it's actually quite common now Durvas is a yogi he's not a bhakti yogi he's a mystic yogi mm -hmm. but he has but he also is very favorable to the principles of devotional service he also is trikala gyan he knows past present and future so he's a very powerful person, but still he gets afflicted and affected by um, anger. Are there any other questions? I'm trying to, to see the chat. Okay. Um, yes, Pritchard has something. Just to follow up, Maharaj, since you mentioned um, uh, Dubas Muni and Amrish, Maharaj, that particular uh, pastime, if you will. Um, I'd also heard something to the effect that um, Dubas Muni, you said, is a great, great mystic, but he was envious of um, Ambarish Maharaj because Ambarish Maharaj was a pure body of a lord and he was a king and he was easily popular. And that Ambarish was a mystic and wasn't getting as much attention, quote unquote, compared to what um, um, Ambarish Maharaj, and that generated envy. With that, also fit the situation in terms of the, some of the negativity that comes from these highly elevated people? It's not that they're envious by nature, mm -hmm. but yeah. sometimes during in a situation, they become envious. Mm -hmm. We see that in ourselves right. too. We yeah. see that in ourselves. All of a sudden, a situation will bring out a certain quality in us that we mm -hmm. don't even know it's there. <laughs> like, you know, well, you're hungry and the prashadam is late, so you get upset. You know? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> I shouldn't get upset because I don't know, really know the conditions why it's late, but still, because I'm hungry, I can't think straight. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. It's a wonderful example. <laughs> I wonder how many times I've been through that. But anyway. But again, it's not a constant characteristic. It just comes up in situations sometimes. Thank you so much, Marge, for this wonderful power pack class. Um, as I was sharing, Marge, I will have to um, hear the class. And if you don't mind, I will email and ask you questions because I was not able to ask my questions while I was trying to help with this. But we thank you so much, Marge, for your time. We thank the devotees for joining us. And it's so nice to see 30 something devotees on this group is like amazing. And by your mercy, Marge, we are so happy that you are able to give class and we look forward to your next class. And Vanchaka Putrabhyascha, Kripa Sindha Bevacha, Patita Nam Pavine, Vya Vaishnava, Vya Namo Namaha. His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki. Thank you so much, Marge. And Marge, we pray for your well being and we pray for your strength and that you will always be healthy. Thank you. That prayer is well appreciated. <laughs>
Thank and we you, pray you always wanted to be remaining. Remember one thing.